day after the pit loss, some of the players said that, uh, the players said they were rattled by the chain. The gavel came out a couple days later and said you can't help them notice the chain. Does the chain make a difference? Well, it made the difference in the game on Saturday. What we showed our players after the game was on the, on the fourth play from scrimmage, fifth play from scrimmage, we knocked the ball on Jaquan Johnson again. Um, we were the first two guys at the ball, but we're not the first guys on the ground. You know, we teach you like, like, like the basketball coach teaches them. Pitt gets the ball back. Now they punt on the next series of downs, but our offense gets the ball at the 10-yard line instead of midfield. Um, twice in the fourth quarter, the ball's in our hands. The quarterback throws the ball right through our hands. Both are arguably pick sixes. So the players have understood that the chain, despite all the fun that comes with it, the chain wins games. Turnovers win games. We played, like I mentioned last week, we played a league where games are close and competitive. We expect that Saturday night. Um, Clemson is one team that does not turn the ball over, a quarterback that does not throw very many receptions. Um, but if it's, it's, we've got to find a way to make it happen because the players now understand that really relates to the losing. How were they doing tackling-wise? Tackling in the pick game was the best tackling game we've had all season. Uh, our guys in the open field were, were outstanding. I think it was the lowest number we've had. It was, it was, uh, it was really a sight to see. There was a lot of good things. Uh, a lot of guys defensively played their best games. On Saturday, I thought Zach McLeod, I thought Shaq Quarterman, uh, Sheldon Redwine, uh, Dita Lane, um, and there were more. There were a lot of guys who probably their, that played their best day in the last Saturday. Now we need to get a group to continue to, to advance and take that going forward. How do you think they held up the defense as a whole? Did you get some pressure on the defense? Yeah, I mean, I think all year I think our, our strength staff has done an amazing job. Uh, we've got a lot of guys that have played their best game on Saturday. Now we need to get a group to continue to advance and take that going forward. You know, you know, again, in the fourth quarter, we got we got a chance to get off the field on some third downs, and balls, and hands, and both times. So, uh, um, our players, you know, I, I think the one the one thing that is without question is that their mental toughness and, and resiliency has shown uh, all year. And you certainly have a, a, a feel for this community. What is how important is it in this area to have a community? Well, I think it matters because I, I think you know the the youth in high school football here. And arguably as good as it's anywhere in the country. And I think people down here want to see the University of Miami represent them. They want to see us represent their community. Those are, those are our young men out there playing against the rest of the world. And, and you know, hey, we're kind of down here at the end of the peninsula, right? We have a little bit of that us against the world mentality. Uh, I think our players have learned that. I think the players have always heard that. I think the way that this year has gone and the success that we've had and some of the, the negativity that's come out against our program, I think they've now can live what they had heard about, and I think they've been able to really understand why the U has the type of uh, place in college ball they've done. Yeah, they've, they've tried before to bring in, you know, a coach who had ties here, and it didn't work out well. Why is it working so well? Well, I, I think uh, I think who Coach Rick is as a person. Um, I think his the way he has secured himself, you know, and I, I think everybody takes everybody from the staff. Players, I think they, they take a lot of comfort in knowing that there's going to be a structure here. There's going to be consistency. Um, we have an amazing staff chemistry. The reason why that is because Coach Rick's an egoless man. So there's no one on the staff that can say, hey, you know, I've done this or I've done that. We all have to fall in line behind him. And I think then the players should see that. I think that's why you see a great team in terms of how we support each other, offense, defense, special teams. You know, so I think all those things that that, that Mark brings in terms of who he is, in fact, filters down through our staff into our locker room. Maybe See, just a, a random thing on two freshmen, John Ford, Bradley Jennings, how much have they played snap-wise in ballpark last month, and what's the skill that encouraged you guys about each of them long-term? Jennings has been uh, primarily a special teams player for us. Um, Ford has has played some limited snaps inside. Uh, I couldn't tell you the exact number. Um, going down the road in the future, uh, we think both have really bright futures. John Ford is just so big and strong, hard guy to move out of there. He's just got to learn. The, you know, he came in late, you know, and, 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 and you can tell where he missed that August in terms of just assignment-wise. Um, Jennings, uh, probably, certainly one of our top guys, a linebacker right now in terms of being physical, got a great pop in his body. Uh, so the way he takes on blocks and tackles, he's probably one of our harder hitters already. Same thing, you just, just got to learning the, the down and down assignments and just the urgency. That you got to play with to be a, to be an everyday guy, and what a great blessing he has to be one for those guys. Yeah. Couple more questions. He has no ego, but he has won two SEC championships. He's been in the moment for the Does that help everyone knowing? Uh, and again, magnitude's game is already known. Does that help at all? Yeah, everybody wants to know that you've, you've had a. I mean, what Mark 
coming in with his years of experience in Georgia, and then again the 15 years in Florida State, where you've been in, you know, 11 of those were you were finishing top four in the country. So the man has won a lot of ball games. So I, and but the great thing about Marcus, he doesn't have to tell you that he's done, right? You you know that, but he doesn't have to say, hey, well I've done this and I've done that, you know. So he's he uh, he exudes confidence, you know, when we're in staff meetings, he exudes confidence in front of the team, and I think our players that's why we have an expectation of winning. With, uh, with Last Jacks being out, uh, how have snaps for Priest, Manny, for Chad, and for Joe, have they? How has Garvin done with his standard role? Yeah, I think we've put, I think it's been more Garvin just playing more, uh, which obviously he was kind of earning that playing time anyway. Um, but now he's getting into the down after down playing, not just the make the fun play on an obvious passing situation. Um, but he's not back down. You know, he's done a good job when he's in there. And of course, we got a guy like Trent Harris that we view as a starter as well. So, um, as we've said all along, you can never have too many defensive ends and, 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 and cover guys. So, so they'll all come in handy on Saturday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.